Hi, hello. Today we're going to be talking about the seven star dark incineroar and what to expect and what we could possibly build for it this upcoming weekend. I have six Pokemon that we can possibly use, but before we get to those six, let's talk about incineroar. Uh, incineroar is the fire dark Pokemon and it will have dark type terror, which means dark moves will do even more damage. It will also most likely come with intimidate since every single starter has been has had their hidden ability. So uh, Intimidate will lower everyone's attack by one stage at the start of the battle. Unless you are bringing a Pokemon with Competitive or Defiant, then you are getting a boost. Uh, Incineroar has really good stats. As some of you might know, Incineroar is incredibly good competitively. It is just a good Pokemon in general because of the Fire Dark type. Uh, Incineroar will be weak to Fairy, Fighting, and Bug. So if you are new here, maybe this is the first time you're watching one of my build videos. What I do to pick the six Pokemon is I calculate the moves that do the most damage to make sure we can survive them. So while I don't expect Incineroar to have close combat, if we can survive a close combat, then we can survive a Brick Break or a Cross Chop instead. Same thing with Flare Blitz, which I actually do expect Incineroar to have. If we can survive Flare Blitz, then we can survive other fire type moves. Um, so these are the moves we calculated here with an Adamant Incineroar. I also calculated a plus three and a plus six because Incineroar does get access to bulk up. But we have uh, Fighting Coverage, Fire. Uh, Darkest Lariat is Incineroar's signature move. It is a dark type move, so it would get boosted by Incineroar's dark type on top of getting boosted by Incineroar's dark Terra type. Darkest Lariat is interesting because it will ignore your defense boost. So a lot of people will probably want to bring body press Pokemon to this and body press works by the higher your defense is, the more body press does. It's a fighting type move. If you use a move like iron defense to boost your defense, while that does increase your damage to body press, Incineroar's Darkest Lariat will ignore those defense boosts. So that's how Darkest Lariat works. Uh, it does get Outrage, Earthquake, Leech Life, Iron Head, Thunder Punch, Shadow Claw, Acrobatics, Trailblaze, well, which is, that's, that, that won't matter. Uh, and then low kick is calculated a little bit differently than another fighting type move, but we these are all the moves we calculated uh, to make sure that the Pokemon we bring can survive. On the status type moves, uh, Incineroar does get Will-O-Wisp to burn us, bulk up to increase both its defense and its uh, attack, Swords Dance to just increase its attack and taunt. We have not seen a 7-star raid boss taunt us yet, and because Incineroar is the dark type Terra, I do actually expect like a, zero, a turn zero taunt. I don't expect it to taunt all four Pokemon. I do expect it to pick one of the four to taunt, so then you cannot use status type moves for three turns. If you were bringing in Iron Hands and you were taunted right away, you would not be able to belly drum for three turns. If you're bringing uh, a Pokemon that has Reflect and you get taunted, you won't be able to Reflect for three turns. I actually think this can be a little bit annoying, uh, definitely off the bat. Obviously, getting burned is very annoying, too. And then bulk up is probably the thing I'm worried about the most. It seems that Game Freak has changed their ways with how 7-star raids do, where they like to do these moves that boost, boost the raid boss's stats very quickly. We saw this with Dragonite, with Dragon Dance. We saw this with Blastoise. We saw this with Venusaur. We've seen this with... A lot of Pokemon, where at the start, Cinderace used bulk up. It would only bulk up like once or twice every now and then. But now with like these recent raids, it's, if they use Dragon Dance, they're almost at plus six like right away. Uh, so this this is probably the more concerning move here if it does have it, and if they are keeping with the consistency that they have been doing. The one move that's not on here that I keep seeing people talk about online is knockoff. Incineroar does get access to knockoff. Knockoff would remove your held item, uh, and then it would also increase the damage by 50%. While the damage stuff would still matter in the raid, I just want to point out that knockoff does not work in raids. Uh, you, the raid boss will not be able to knock off your held item. How do we know this? Because there's already six star raid bosses that have knockoff, and your held item does not get removed. Now, I guess they could change this uh, in the past. You could not knock off Mewtwo's Chesto Berry, but you could knock off Pikachu's Light Ball. But every raid boss that has had knockoff currently in the game that uses it against us, it does not work in the fact of removing our held item. So just knockoff is, is just not a concern here. Our first 
Pokemon that we are building is Conkeldur with the fighting type Terra, uh, holding a scope lens. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you might know where this is going right away with this, with scope lens being on this Conkeldur. But we're actually going to give it Drain Punch, Bulk Up, Focus Energy, and Rain Dance. Yeah, crazy that Conkeldur gets Rain Dance. So the Rain Dance is here for team support. Uh, obviously, we don't res we resist fighting because we are sorry we resist dark because we are a fighting type Pokemon, but we do not resist fire. And Flare Blitz, I think, can do a lot of damage to Pokemon that do not resist fire in general just because of Incineroar's strong attack type and Flare Blitz doing 120 damage plus the same type attack bonus from Incineroar still being a fire type underneath that dark type Terra. So Rain Dance would reduce all fire type moves for your entire team for five turns. Whether you use that or a teammate uses that, it would be beneficial for your team. Uh, but more importantly, the scope lens item and focus energy. Focus energy is such a cool move in raids because it cannot be cleared by a raid boss. If you bulk up or you iron defense or you sword stance, eventually you'll get a point in the raid where the raid boss will clear your stats and you got to do it all over again. And maybe you're sitting next to a slow bro who spent the last four turns using uh, Call Mind and Iron Defense and Nasty Plot, and it hasn't done anything but power itself up, and then Ray Boss clears it, and then you spend the next four turns watching them do it all over again. It's really annoying. Focus Energy does not clear at all. The only way Focus Energy goes away is if you faint. So with the combination of Focus Energy and Scope Lens, that means your Drain Punch will always critical hit. That means you're going to be doing more damage and you're going to be getting more health back. That's why we don't need a Shell Bell in this situation. On top of that, Drain Punch, always critical hitting, will ignore Incineroar's bulk ups. So Incineroar can increase its defense with bulk up, but when you critical hit, you ignore those defense changes, which means that you'll still be doing a great amount of damage. You'll be ignoring the stats. You'll be always critical hitting. You'll be getting health back. And that's just a fantastic combination. On top of that, what makes also Con Kelder really cool is its ability Guts. Incineroar ha will have multiple ways to burn us. Any fire type move Incineroar uses has a chance to burn. Any, uh, it, it has access to Will-O-Wisp, so it can burn us there. So if we get burned, which is probably likely because it won't want to use fighting type moves, it won't want to use dark type moves against us and want a, to use fire type moves against us. When we get burned, we will do even more damage, which is just a really cool combination. So we actually want to get burned. Now, comparing this to an Iron Hands, which can actually run a very similar set of Drain Punch Focus Energy Scope Lens, if Iron Hands got burned, it would actually cut its attack stat in half. We're increasing our attack by 50% when we get burned. So I do think Con Kelder will probably need a teammate setting Reflect to really just help with those initial fire type moves so it can kind of get set up. Even if you have somebody using Haze and resetting all the stats, you're still going to be doing really good damage with Focus Energy, Scope Lens, Drain Punch, uh, and you'll be able to keep getting your health back. And you want to hope for that burn so you do even more damage in that situation. Also, I just realized on this graphic that my... <laughs> I just realized that my uh, Conkelder is not adamant, so let me fix that real quick. All right, all fixed. EV should be on the screen, so we're just doing 252 HP, 252 attack, and then four in defense. Make sure with all these Pokemon, you take them to the bottle cap person to increase your IVs, uh, and make sure that you set the right nature, because I totally forgot until starting this video. Our next Pokemon is going to be Colossal, and Colossal is going to be our body presser. Now, I know that the number one comment I'm going to get be, for people who don't watch this video or people who just see the graphics on Twitter or Instagram is going to be, where is Doxbun? I think that's how you say it, Doxbun. Uh, because Doxbun cannot get hit by fire type moves. It resists dark type because it's fairy um, and it has access to body press. I, while I, 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 ran, I ran calculations on Doxbun and it does survive. It survives really, really well. The problem I have with Doxbun is that even though it is a body presser, it's not a very strong body presser. I believe Doxbun has 110, 115 defense, uh, but it has no way to increase its defense. It would have to rely on Incineroar using fire type moves to increase its defense over and over again. And at some point, that's going to be cleared by the stat reset. So even if Incineroar uses three fire type moves off the bat, It'll get cleared, and then you'll need Incineroar to do another six to get to plus six defense for Doxbun. 
I think Sid, I just don't think its move set is really great compared to other body pressers that exist. I think Carbink is a better body presser. I think uh, Como O is a better better body presser um, in this situation against this raid boss because they can do other things that Doxbun cannot do, like set reflect for your entire team or actually power up its own defense with a move like Iron Defense. This brings us to Colossal and why I think Colossal is going to hopefully, fingers crossed, be one of the best body pressers for this raid. One is because of its ability. Colossal has the ability Flame Body, which means anytime Incineroar attacks Colossal, there will be a 30% chance that Incineroar gets burned, which means that all of its attacks will do half the amount of damage to the entire team. That is something Doxbun cannot do. So even though Doxbun will be a very survivable dog the entire time, that doesn't mean your teammates standing next to you will be very survivable. And if Doxbun can't do enough damage faster and your teammates are dying, that's not good for your raid experience. So not only do we have Flame Body, which is a 30% chance to burn, we get access to Scald, which is another 30% chance to burn. So we can power up and build Terra using Scald to then Terrastalize to Fighting type, and then we can Iron Defense Body Press. I never usually think it's worth Iron Defensing like right off the bat because we do expect those stats to get reset off the, uh, right away. So how I would play this is I would reflect to help the whole team. I would then use Scald to fish for the burn. If you don't burn with Scald, you're going to burn with Flame Body. And then you'll be able to set up with Iron Defense Body Press. And by that time, that stat reset should have already happened with Incineroar. So you don't have to worry about setting multiple Iron Defenses and then doing it again when your stats get reset. So 252 Defense, 4 in... Uh, four in special attack, and then 252 in HP. You can replace Scald for Scorching Sands. They both do the same thing, but I think Scald is a little bit better here because if somebody is setting Rain Dance, then your Scald is just going to do more damage. Scald and Scorching Sands are not super effective uh, against Incineroar in this situation, but with the Rain, Scald will do more damage. I also just remembered doing this that I did not change Colossal to Fighting Type Terra. <laughs> it's been a very busy week. So let me change this to fighting type Terra and then uh, we'll move on to the next Pokemon. All right, that is fixed. We changed that to fighting type Terra. Now the next Pokemon, our Terra doesn't really matter that much because we're probably not going to ter terrestrialize it. And that's going to be Primarina. She is a support Pokemon, going to be holding light clay. If, if, you, if you do want to pick a Terra, I think Fairy is the better Terra if you do want to Terra her. Uh, but otherwise, I don't think you really need to because she'll be playing support. Our moveset's going to be Alluring Voice, Reflect, Haze, and Life Dew. What I talked about earlier is I'm very worried that Incineroar would do the bulk up thing, just like Blastoise, Venusaur, a Dragonite, etc. Uh, so Haze will clear that all. Now that doesn't have very good synergy with something like Colossal. It also, but it does have okay synergy with with Conkeldur because Conkeldur really is just going to be critical hitting over and over. Uh, more importantly, though, I think like removing a plus six attack and a plus six defense from Incineroar is going to be beneficial for the, the team. But keep in mind, Haze does have negative synergy with pretty much any Pokemon that wants to body press. Uh, we have a solution for that for our next Pokemon, but getting rid of a plus six attack is still more important than the Pokemon standing next to you to be plus six defense and you... The, the, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a really weird situation, and there's only two moves that really clear the raid boss's stats. One is Haze, one is Clear Smog, and there's not a lot of Pokemon that get access to Clear Smog either. So this is kind of the situation we're in. So if you are going to be using Haze, you're going to be wanting, you want to use it right away because that Intimidate is going to hit everyone. So if you do have, you know, an Iron Hand standing next to you or an Annihilate standing next to you, well, I guess Annihilate's uh, an exception there. But if you have an Iron Hand, the Iron Hand's going to be negative one. So the Haze does clear that all for, for everyone off the bat. Reflect, we know what that does. Very good. And then Life Do is to keep that team healthy. Now, Alluring Voice is a really cool move. Uh, it, got introduced in, it got introduced in Generation 9. What it does is if Incineroar does boost its own stats, whether, whether that's with Sword Dance or Bulk Up, uh, Alluring Voice will have a 20% chance to Confuse. It is also doing super effective Fairy Damage. With, uh, with an 80 base power. So 
It's not going to be the hardest hitting move, but if you are, if your reflect is already set, if if the haze has already happened, if everyone's being very healthy, you can hit alluring voice, and now you have a twenty percent chance to confuse if Incineroar goes down this bulk up spam wagon that we expect. That's good. That's confusing is good because that's one less turn that Incineroar is going to attack and hopefully hit itself in confusion, and that will keep your team more alive. Prima Arena survives very very well here. Uh, if for some reason we don't need Haze, uh, we can do Chilling Water instead. We can also put Rain Dance on Primarina. So there's a bunch of things that we can do for Primarina to help out the entire team. And she just hard counters Incineroar with her typing very well, being Water Fairy. Now, the EVs are a little weird here, and I'm going to kind of explain why. We're going to do 252 HP, 240 Defense, 12 in Special Attack. The reason we're doing 12 in Special Attack is because we actually hit a Jump Point. So we get a free bonus point in our special attack. And then we're doing four in speed. The reason we're doing four in speed is because Incineroar and Primarina have the same speed stat of 60. So by just putting four in speed, we will always outspeed Incineroar. Unless for some reason Incineroar has a plus speed nature. We do speed creep Incineroar just by putting four in, which means our life dues will go before Incineroar attacks us. Our reflect will go before Incineroar attacks us, etc. Um, so that is very, very helpful. Before we get to our next Pokemon, which I can't believe we even built this Pokemon, if you enjoy these videos or if they're helpful to you, please like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. It's really helpful. Share it with a friend. I don't know. Uh, but comment which one of these Pokemon you think is cool or tell me why I decided to build Cargo because here is Cargo. Not a very good Pokemon. Stat-wise, on paper, Cargo has very bad stats. Uh, also, Macargo's from Gen 2, not Gen 3. A lot of people think Macargo's from Gen 3. It's not. This is a fairy-type Macargo holding the light clay, so it is going to be a support Pokemon. 252 HP, 252 defense, 4 in special attack. We're going to do Burning Jealousy, Clear Smog, Reflect, and Terra Blast. That Terra Blast will obviously be fairy, but we're not here to attack. It's just that Macargo also, on top of having bad stats, also has a very limited move pool. Move pool. But it does get access to two things I want. Uh, which not a lot of Pokemon do, which is Reflect to help the team and Clear Smog to help the team. Uh, so Clear Smog will clear just Incineroar's stats. It's like Haze, but Haze is doing everyone on the field. Clear Smog is only doing the Pokemon you target. Even though it has bad stats, and even though it has bad move pool, and even though maybe no one should probably build Macargo ever, Macargo has another thing we want, which is Flame Body. So the same thing as Colossal. Anytime Incineroar attacks Macargo, there will be a 30% chance to burn it which is helpful for the entire team. And McCargo also gets access to Burning Jealousy. So if Incineroar does try to bulk up, we can use Burning Jealousy, which will automatically burn it. In a perfect world, I don't know if this Incineroar will be a perfect world, uh, we're going to be able to burn Incineroar. We're going to be able to set Reflect. We're going to be able to stop any Swords Dance or bulk ups with Clear Smog. Uh, and then our team can do the rest because even though that is all great, McCargo is not going to be able to output damage. <laughs> because its stats are so bad. <laughs> but my cargo should be able to keep Incineroar at bay so the other Pokemon around us, like the Body Pressers or the Drain Punchers, uh, can do good damage, and then everyone can survive. So that's my cargo. It's definitely a Pokemon. I caught this one on Christmas one year, so that's kind of cool. Don't know if you should build it, but it's, it, 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 it fills what we're looking for it to do. Our next Pokemon is going to be Araquanid, uh, and Araquanid is going to be holding the Damp Rock, which means Rain Dance will last longer. There's a reasoning for this, and you're probably going, like, Steve, you forgot to change the Terra type. I did not. Bug type Terra is the Terra we are going. Araquanid, I'm going to consider an all-arounder. I don't think four Araquanids are going to win the battle, but I think one Araquanid on a team is really great. Uh, so Araquanid gets access to Reflect and Rain Dance. Rain Dance to prevent those fire type moves from doing a lot of damage to Pokemon that would not resist. Um, but the ability is one I want to talk about. Even if you don't build an Araquanid or use an Araquanid, Araquanid has a signature ability called Water Bubble, which means you cannot be burned at all, no matter what. And obviously, because Araquanid in this case is a physical attacker, no physical attacker wants to get burned because that reduces its uh, attack stat drastically. Not only that, but Water Bubble also reduces fire type moves in general so that's why it's safe for us to go pure bug type terra uh because 
water bubble's ability will still protect us. Now we want a little extra protection, obviously, because Flare Blitz can still do a lot of damage. That's why the Rain Dance is here to help not only you, but the entire team. And so I would Rain Dance ideally right before you, Terra, so you get eight turns of no, uh, you get eight turns of fire type moves being reduced. We also have Lunge to reduce Incineroar's physical attack, and then we have Leech Life, which will do super effective damage, but also give us health back. Um, you could probably switch out Damp Rock for something like uh, Shell Bell or Big Root. Big Root works better with Leech Life, so I would do Big Root instead. You could also switch it with a Light Clay if you want Reflect to last longer. The only problem with a Pokemon like Araquanid in this raid is that if Incineroar uses Bulk Up and is plus six, uh, our Leech Lifes are not going to be doing any damage. We don't get around that with something like a critical hit, always Conkeldur. So we have another Pokemon that partners really well with this, but this applies to a lot of Pokemon that can't critical hit, or at least with like Iron Defense, you're surviving really well and you're kind of hitting back and forth. It's like a slugfest with Iron Defense at least because you have plus six defense, they have plus six attack, so it kind of cancels each other out. Um, but, uh, but Araquanid doesn't get that luxury unless we pair Araquanid with Pignite. Uh, Pignite's Terra doesn't matter here, uh, because you're not going to trash lies Pignite at all, but Pignite has uh, the hidden ability Thick Fat, which Embor does not get. Embor, Thick Fat changes into Reckless when Pignite evolves into Embor. Um, so pig, so with with the Evio Light, we double our defenses, we double our uh, special defenses, but more importantly, we also have the move Coaching. So Coaching will increase the defense and attack of all three of our teammates standing next to it. So that does help a Dosh Bun, that does help a Conkeldur, that does help a Primarina, or specifically a Raquinid by increasing its defense and by increasing its attack. Um, so that's one way that Dash Bun can get to that plus six is with a Pig Knight coaching next to it. Uh, if that is the case, I would suggest the Dash Bun like run like a Rain Dance or something or a Charm to to help survivability of the team as Pig Knight coaches everyone. Pig Knight also gets access to Will O Wisp. That burn will obviously we've talked about it enough. We understand what burn does. Taunt. Uh, a lot of these Pokemon do get access to Taunt, like Conkeldur can also learn Taunt. Uh, but Taunt to stop a possible bulk up or a possible Swords Dance, and then Mud Slap just to reduce Incineroar's accuracy. Um, you could do Drain Punch here, but I think Mud Slap is more beneficial because it's a Pig Knight. It's not going to hit very hard, so you're not going to get that much health back from a Drain Punch. So, uh, and really, there's probably another status type move we can do instead of Mud Slap, like a Helping Hand. My only worry with that is if Incineroar taunts the Pig Knight, then all of a sudden we're we're gonna use Struggle. So if I guess we don't see a if we don't see a taunt, I would actually replace Mud Slap with like something like Helping Hand. Um, but ideally, I would open up with either a Taunt or a Will O Wisp, especially if we are expecting bulk up right away, uh, and then switch over to Coaching to coach your team. That's probably gonna get reset, but uh, you can keep Coaching over and over again. So because of how I label my graphics. When I label something as support, uh, that usually means you don't want two of the same supports. So you don't want two Pig Knights or two Primarinas. I think a Pig Knight and a Primarina are still okay between that. So that's kind of how I label those graphics, which, which is attack, all arounder, and then support. So probably not gonna win with multiple Pig Knights on the team. I don't know, maybe two Pig Knights can really coach the heck out of a uh, a Conkeldur or coach the heck out of a Colossal. I'd, I'll have to try it, but um, until we know Incineroar's final moveset, this is the best I can build based off of everything it can learn. Uh, and like I said, I calculated a plus three Incineroar, a plus six Incineroar, and then I, all, those, all those moves were calculated with Incineroar being adamant. Um, so those are, oh, did I not talk about the EVs for Pig Knight? Oh, I didn't talk about the EVs for Pig Knight or the EVs for Araquanid, but they should have been on the screen. Araquanid was 252 HP, 176 attack, and 80 defense. And then Pig Knight will actually be 212 HP, 252 defense, and 44 speed. 
The 44 speed is actually to, again, speed creep Incineroar. That puts Incineroar speed at 61. Uh, this puts uh, Pig Knight, if I did the math right, at 61. I think I said 61 for Incineroar. Incineroar speed is 60. This puts Pig Knight at 61, which means our coaching will go before it. Our Mudslap will go before it. Taunt, will o etc. et cetera. So those are all the builds. If you need help with that, I will be streaming it on Thursday night on Twitch. You can come over to Twitch, ask for help. I'll be able to get you through. Uh, if Twitch doesn't work out for you, you can join our Discord and people in Discord will be able to help you as well. And if you made it to the end of the video, you now understand why I didn't recommend Dashbun here. But I, like I said, I think Dashbun can still work. I just think there are better body pressers. Um, and there are a couple Pokemon that really help Dashbun out to do what Dashbun wants to do. So uh, anyways, thanks for making it to the end. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, bye.